Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a follow-up video about my render machine. As I probably announced in the previous or in like two videos ago, I don't really know. We are going to talk about the hard tubes because in my render PC we are not going to use PETG or acrylic hard tubes. I decided to get borosilicate glass tubes and I think it's quite difficult to work with them. First time I encountered them or I came across those borosilicate tubes was in a video of Jace 2 Sense a while ago but I never really paid that much attention, I have to admit. And then I saw them again in a Lian Li video I did together with Mary, where we were judging the Lian Li O11 dynamic builds for a giveaway. And I think the second best or the best PC was using borosilicate tubes from Alphacool. That's why I decided to order the same tubes for this build. And we're going to use them and see how it goes. Like cutting the tubes obviously we cannot bend them we cannot just use the heat gun and then put in the silicon tube and then try to bend them that's not going to work everything will be a little bit more complex difficult but i think the look in the end will be much better more high-end let's take a closer look at the tubes first all of them are alpha cool tubes this one with a length of 40 centimeters and we also have the longer one with 60 centimeters. The pricing for the shorter one for the 40 is like 9 euro. This one is like, no, this is 8 euro, this is 9 euro. So price difference, almost nothing, considering that you get about 50% more right here. I think it's probably better just to get a longer version in general. Looking at the tubes, you will see they're quite thick. It's 16 millimeters outer diameter and 11 millimeters inner diameter. Also, just judging at how the cutting looks right here, or you can see that it was cut and then they added some chamfer on the corners of the tube, but that looks quite nice. I think that's usable for a fitting without cutting the o-ring, looks okay. Luckily, there is not only the straight tube available, but also the bent tubes. We have 30 or 10 to 30 centimeters, it's called 90 degree angle. This one costs yeah, hefty 17.5 euro. That's quite expensive, I think, for just using such a small glass tube. But the bend itself looks quite good. Quality of the bend is really nice. Obviously, we're stretching the outer part a little bit. That always happens when you're bending a tube. It doesn't matter if it's glass or if it's acrylic or metal. That's why you get this yeah, kind of effect that it looks a little bit thinner on the bend, but it's, I think that's fine. Also rotating, you can see that there is no weird thing on the outer areas. So quality of the glass tube, I think is really impressive. Interesting is that if we're taking a look at the cut, what is interesting is if we're taking a look at the area where the glass tubes were cut, the straight tubes look like they were really cut and then, I don't know, like adding some chamfer with a grinder afterwards, I don't know. And the bent tube looks like it used some flames or it was melted afterwards. And yeah, I think the bent tube looks a little bit better or more friendly to be used inside a hard tube fitting and beside the smaller one the 10 to 30 centimeters we also have the 20 to 40 centimeters with 90 degree angle the longer version and i would actually recommend just to get the longer version because this one is 17.5 euro and this one is 18.5 euro and i have to say i bought eight of the straight tubes of the smaller ones eight of the straight tube longer ones eight of those eight of those total investment 400 euro so i spent 400 euros just on the glass tubing and i think that's quite an investment considering that in the past i think i bought a whole water cooling rig just for 400 euro or the water cooling system itself obviously not a hardware but yeah investing 400 euro i think it's it's quite a bit but quality overall of those alpha cool tubes really really impressive but the thing is about glass tubes how are you going to cut them cutting is really difficult because you cannot just use your dremel and then cut it with like a diamond cutter the dust from borosilicate glass is really dangerous if you inhale that inside your lung you can permanently permanently damage your lung i think it's silicosis or something like that there is something some kind of illness you get from cutting or inhaling um, silicate dust so don't do that that's a really really terrible idea there are some glass cutters available 
I bought this one from Amazon or eBay, I think, for not even 10 euro. And it's pretty much the only one I could find. It looks cheap, it feels cheap, it was cheap. I wish there was more like a quality version of it, because you can already see how this one wiggles. So I'm not quite sure how effective this will be. Also consider this is full metal. If we now take the tube and put it in between the cutter, it will have to rotate inside there and then it would have, will have direct contact to the metal piece on top right here. And I think it will leave some scratches on the tube which might l not look nice. But yeah, let's see how this thing goes. Let's just use this 40 centimeter tube and see how it goes with a cheap cutter. This does not look very nice. You can see there's a difference between where we started and where we ended. And that's what I kind of expected because this thing is really not stiff. That's, uh, let's just try it again. Maybe a second time will make it better. Yeah, second try is same problem. I think I will try it again several more times and see if we can improve it somehow. Third try looks much better. While I was rotating the tube, I was also pushing in this direction to prevent that we get those kind of overlapping cuts right here. Not sure how this is called in English. But the problem I can see right now is that at this position right here and at this position right here, but Mary already said that we cannot see it in the camera, there's some scratches on the tube caused by the metal part right here. I think we will just have to build our own cutter, but let's just try to break this first. Well, that's not what I, expect, what I expected. I expected it to crack right here and not at the second cut. The cut itself looks quite nice. It's not perfectly flat because there was this kind of overlap and we have this right here, which I think is also caused by not having the perfect cut. So there's a piece of glass missing that's on the table right here. Don't really want to touch it. I think it's easy to cut yourself. I'm also wearing goggles right now to protect my eyes because there were some smaller pieces of glass just flying around. Maybe I should use some gloves for my hands as well in future. But yeah, I mean glass cutting works, but not with this cutter. Let's go to Case King and build our own. We are in front of our laser engraving and also laser cutting machine. This is 10 millimeter thick acrylic, clear acrylic, which we will use for the middle part of the glass cutter and also for the arm, which eventually will apply pressure to the glass tube for cutting. Done with the 10 millimeter acrylic parts, look quite nice. And uh, now we only need the side parts, which are then keeping the tool together. We will use some yeah, black three millimeter acrylic material for it, but yeah, we could use anything. Doesn't really matter what kind of material or size or even color, but yeah, I think clear acrylic 10 millimeter and black will look quite nice. Time for assembly, using the black acrylic parts, removing the foil, we have the middle part and the arm. Using the two black parts, 
and a screw to keep them together. Obviously remove another protection film first. Now we need two M8 times 40 screws, two nuts, some washers. We need the washers to keep some distance between this ball bearing and the acrylic parts on the side. Next step is using another screw to fix the arm inside the base. And then I think, yeah, looks quite good so far. Comparing the original cheap one versus our DIY tool, I think it looks quite nice. Arm is now also fixed, it's movable and the ball bearings are moving smoothly, so that's all cool. The only thing that's missing right now is the metal wheel that goes into the top part, into the arm, that then applies the pressure to the glass tube. And yeah, to do that we need to cut another piece inside here in the top arm, but I don't have the tools here right now, that's something we will do at my home, so let's go back. Meanwhile, back in my apartment, I used the Dremel to cut another groove inside the acrylic arm on top. Now we will replace the metal wheel from the original cutter into our self-made glass cut tool. Self-made glass cut tool is finished. The bearings are working nicely and smooth. The arm is safely secured. Doesn't wiggle around as the original tool did. Also the wheel, the hard metal wheel is much better than before. I think better tolerances on our acrylic tool. Let's just see and test how this one works. I think the result looks okay. Maybe I need a little bit less pressure than what I used because you can see some parts kind of broke off from the edge of the glass tube. But it looks better than the original tool because we didn't have this kind of yeah, mismatch right here. We don't have the mismatch like on the original tool. I think that looks better. Maybe a little. That's far from perfect. There's still, yeah. I'm not sure maybe that's because the cut was not that smooth. Let's just try another one. I performed two or three more cuts, kind of happy with the result, but I think I'm getting there, maybe have to test it two or three more times. I saw from Jay's Two Cents, he posted a very good video like two or three months, no, years ago, where he was using a drill and kind of fixed his tube inside the drill, unfortunately mine is too small for that, but what he did is fixing it in there and then eventually also grinding off the edge and adding a nice chamfer to it which is what I did with some wet sanding paper. Use the less fine sanding paper on here. Wet sanding paper because then all the dust gets stuck inside the water. You don't have the dust of the silicate flowing around in your room. Then moved over to the 40 micrometer paper. And I think the result is kind of okay. At least the chamfer is nice. I think it's not going to damage our O-ring. This part, which yeah, broke off here, and I'm not so happy about, but in general, I think we're getting there. In the next video, we will continue building the machine. Maybe you have some more tips, experiences about the silicate tubing. Feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Thanks for joining in. See you next time. Bye.